Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, I'm Jay Banner. I'm with the University of Texas, and I'm with the Jackson School of Geosciences and the Environmental Science Institute there. And I'd like to discuss the importance of Senate Bill 988. The importance of this bill, I think, is made clear when we consider the impacts that climate change will have on Texas specifically. We start out on a larger scale. We consider climate change on a global scale. And it's important to identify the things that there is scientific certainty about. There is a greenhouse effect, and carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. Carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has been increasing since the late 1800s, and it will continue to rise. In some respects, no matter what we do right now, it will continue to rise for a while. The atmosphere has warmed over the course of the 20th century. Uh, there are some things that the scientific community has reached a strong consensus about, not the same level of scientific certainty as those things I just listed, such as the projection of climate change effects will not be evenly distributed around the globe. There are going to be some regions that are more strongly impacted than others. And Texas is one of those regions that's projected to experience significant impacts relative to many other regions in the world. I'd like to refer you to this document called Climate Change Impacts on Texas Water that's been passed around. Okay. And what this document does is uh, starts out by explaining the past and present climate of Texas and discusses model projections of future changes and what those impacts will be of those changes on Texas's water and other resources. And it concludes with some recommendations for action. There's a lot of information in here. I know your time is short. So if there's only one aspect of Texas climate change to consider or only one diagram to look at, I refer you to the one on page 9 in this document. Page 9, that's figure 3. Okay, this shows the changes through time in the Palmer Drought Severity Index. This is shown here on the y-axis as PDSI for several centuries in the past and for the next century. All right, this drought index is based on rainfall and temperature changes, and it's used for planning purposes. If we look at the, this current century, that this, this most recent century we just came out of, the 1950s, you can see the drought there. If we look at the red curve, the red curve is past changes in the drought severity index. Okay, this is based on tree ring measurements. Okay, so these are data sort of. Are you on the, the top one or the bottom one? Are they both? I'm on the uh, bottom, on, on the top panel of figure three. That goes from 1800 to 2100. Oh, 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 okay, I see. Okay. So the bottom one is the, oh, it goes back to 1050. All right. And then. Up to 1350, 1350. And then we jump to 1800. Okay, why do you jump there? Just because you don't have the data or something? No, there's, there's <laughs> actually plenty of data. We're just looking okay. to uh, just, highlight some of it. But there's a, okay, so you're doing 300 years from 1000 to 1350, and then you're doing another 300 years. Another 300 years. Okay, I got it. Correct. Thank you. Okay. So if we look at the 1950s, we see that that red line takes a significant dip there. Right. That's the historical drought of record that Texas uses for planning purposes. Right. Okay, so what I would point out then on the lower panel is that we could see that there were times in the past, for example, multiple times in the 1200s, during which there were droughts of longer duration than the 1950s drought. Mm -hmm. Now, the 1950s is held up as the historical drought of record. What this says is that these times in the past, 1200s, which precede any anthropogenic climate change impacts, no matter which side of that debate you're on, it doesn't matter, because these are changes that occurred without any human effects, because it was before there were any possible effects by human activity. Okay. That's in the past. Now, if we look at that same diagram, the top panel, that green curve, is then model projections for the future. Okay, these are based on climate models from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, their 2007 report, the fourth assessment report. And so these complex numerical models that were developed by multiple groups around the world, international research groups, all show the same thing, right? They all show that with the onset of warming in the 21st century, what we're, what, what's projected to be seen is an increase in the dryness or the aridity of this part of Texas. This is for West Texas that this is shown. Now, there are multiple models. That there are over a dozen models that have been run, and there's some disagreement in terms of exactly when the onset and the duration of this intense drought will be. But what there is agreement by essentially all of these models is that this will occur. Whether it's years from now or decades from now is basically the level of disagreement. But what you can see from the green curve and how it dips down is that the average climate state in the future here is going to be just like 
the 1950s drought of record. So instead of that being an anomaly, the projections are that will be the typical climate that we may experience, according to these projections. Well, I, I just heard, if I may, Chairman, if I just heard him say there's going to be more rain. Oh, I, I stated the more intense rainfall will become in shorter bursts. So we have oh, a okay. paradoxical situation, more flooding and more drought, because you're not okay. evenly distributing rainfall. Okay, thank you. So whether it's years off or decades off, Texas needs to be prepared. And I think Senate Bill 988 will have major agencies, including those that oversee our water, our agriculture, public safety, and utilities, consider how climate change will impact these sectors of the state. I've only talked about climate change impacts on water here, but there will also be impacts on public health, sea level, wildlife, the state's economy, and these effects are outlined also in this paper. So given that the possibility that climate change impacts will be very significant, I think it will be very costly to the state if such changes as proposed in Senate Bill 988 are not considered now. And I think that the bill is a critical first step in addressing these impacts. Um, let me end with pointing out that the main recommendation of this paper that I passed around is that the state establish a Texas Climate Consortium, which will act in a similar manner to the Intergovernmental Panel for Climate Change, but will be at a regional level for Texas. It will examine the latest information and projections for climate change and its impacts in this region. And this consortium would bring together climate scientists, such as Dr. Nielsen Gammon, resource managers, policymakers, members of your committee, and other stakeholders to assess the state of knowledge on these issues and make recommendations for key research that's needed. This would be a logical next step once the plans in Senate Bill 988 are, are enacted. Thank you.